Hey guys, uh, I'm Jose and this is tutorial number five uh, on functions. Um, okay, so let's start right in. Um, we're going to learn how to define your own functions uh, and this is a really good way of, of, of keeping your code tidy and, and, and optimizing what uh, the amount of code you write. Like anything that you see yourself writing twice, you can make it into a function that would just, you can call with a shortcut somehow, right? Um, so let's see how to define something like a function, right? So the first thing you need to define a function is use uh, the keywords def, D-E-F, uh, uh, describing define. And we're going to say my function, right? My function. Um, so we're going to do something very simple first, and we're going to open parentheses, and we're going to put the inputs of the function. In this case, you see, I'm going to put x and y, right? And column. Um, so now the indent uh, this indented space would be similar to the for loop. Everything that is in this indented uh, space would be the statements inside the function, right? So we're gonna say something like uh, print x plus y. Extremely simple. Um, so we're using the the inputs of x and y, um, and we're using those inside the function, right? So those uh, inputs are visible inside the function. Uh, now, if we just go out of uh, the function, so let's say, oops, just we're gonna right here, we're gonna call the function, right? So we're gonna say my function. And we're gonna put something like ten comma eight. Uh, and let's see. Sorry, uh, this is just function, All right? There we go. So you can see that my function is actually calling this method here, right? It's calling the addition. So we could copy paste this line and then call our function with different values. Right, so we're calling the function with different values, and we're kind of all the time just using different inputs for this operation. Right, so let's see, and you can see that the different additions and the prints appear on the screen. So, I mean, the addition is pretty much inbuilt. So, you might ask yourself, like, why do we need to just do an addition function? Right, so yeah, the true, we don't really need to do something like that. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. We're going to introduce of um how to use elements on the screen as well. So this is quite exciting because you could start seeing how you could actually start building some geometry out of modeling or drawing stuff and you could incorporate some of the procedures with scripts, right? So let's do something like str object, right? And we're gonna say equals rhino dot get object, right? So this function allows us to collect something from the screen, from the workspace. Uh, so we're going to open parentheses here, and we're getting a little bit of help here. And it says, first of all, you need to provide a message. Right? OK, so we're going to say, um, as in a string, we're going to say, pick an object from string. right? And then we're going to, it suggests, that we uh, uh, put a filter on. So if you uh, don't really know what this means, we could just always press F1 and go to, um, to the help file. So let's say get object, right? So web get object has a lot of information here. Uh, and the filter type, it's a value that we, if, depending on the value that we use, it's a filter in which you will only be allowed to select certain kinds of geometry, right? So if we put zero, we will be able to select anything. If we just put a one, we will only be able to select points. In this case, I want to just be able to select curves. So I'm just going to put a four here, right? And you can see that this function actually returns the identifier of an object. So what you're seeing here is string object, a variable, 
and equal because this function returns an object we this this fun uh, this variable would get assigned the identifier of that object right so this is an operation that we will be using a lot to use variables that has uh, that contains the identifier of objects right so let's put also for that is the filter for curves and I'm gonna close it there's a lot of other parameters that we could actually use so um, just feel free to to go and check those uh, if you want to just add more arguments to this function you would just put comma and more stuff here but you can just do, leave it like that and that will be fine um, so let's go ahead and just build some piece of like some curves and here I'm just gonna draw a circle right from that's really simple like a curve something on screen right so if we run this now you can see here that the command line is asking us pick an object from the screen and if we go inside the workspace we can actually click on that object and we actually select it so the script is actually allowing us it's, it, it starts running it asks for an object to pick from the screen and we can do something with that we're not doing anything right now but we will right so Let's change this function right now. Let's uh, remove this and let's change this. My function would be would receive uh, an object and um, a translation. Right. So we're gonna inside the function we're gonna call rs dot move object. Right. So as any uh, Rhino function, this will ask us for some information. It, would say, it says, I require an object ID and a translation, right? So we could go into F1 and check how to how to work with this, but, but I actually know how to do it. So we're gonna, we need to provide the string identifier of an object that this is what it, this function is actually returning, right? So let's put object and we are going to put the translation here right so these are the two arguments that this function needs um, so when we call this function we will need to provide a string identifier of an object and in this case is the translation a translation is a little list that contains three values x y z so let's see how to call that function now we need to first define our function and after that we are going to call it right so if we if we do it the other way around like in other uh, different programming languages that wouldn't work because it would ask us. Uh, I don't. I don't know what that function is, right? So let's um, call that function. So my function, right? And I'm gonna put str object as the object identifier. That's the first argument that this function is asking for, right? And then I need to provide a list. Again, if you are not familiar with lists, we'll do a tutorial on lists specifically and how to build those. But it's a little collection of numbers. So we're going to say 20, 0, 0, right? So, and then we need to close the parentheses. Just make sure that your parentheses are, you can see that everything seems to be fine, right? So we're providing an object and we are moving it in this amount of units uh, at the same time I want to say something like print uh, translation uh, successful I don't know if you spell it like that, that's right um, so we're doing not just one thing but we could put as much as we want here we can do functions that are quite a, quite long but uh, it's good to keep them short and now our function will execute this line let's see so pick an object from the screen click and the function gets executed and it displaces our element in 20 units right right so can we call this function twice, right? Uh, well, yes, let's try it again. So maybe we could just wanna use 
maybe my function the same object we're going to use the same object in this case we're going to say 10 units in x and then maybe 10 units in y we could obviously we could just put 10 and 10 and it would be the same result but i just want to show how we are kind of um calling the function in, uh, with different arguments and that will actually produce this result it was moved 10 units to the right and then the same object got moved 10 units in y um, so that is uh, how do we define a function and also we saw how to get an object from the screen the, the, the last thing i wanted to do here uh, maybe is to to show a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes of what is this string identifier right so let's print string object and when we pick this element we can see this long number here right so this is the way in which rhino identifies uh, each element in the scene each object that you have any anything that you actually draw will have a specific identifier that is a string a very long string like that. it's not that you will ever have to type this information in it's only that you want to collect that information and be able to do stuff with it, this object in this in, in this way the script will know that we're referring to that object and that we want to do operations with it so uh, bearing that in mind uh, how to return variables from a function in build function of rhino and how to build our own functions to actually um, automate uh, some procedures the next uh, tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, classes uh, and that would be the first uh, the end of the first chapter uh, and then we're going to really dive in in some of the um, geometric operations that we can do with the uh, Rhino Python.